Hey guys, welcome to Honeycomb. My name is Ko, and today we're going to be talking about Space Jam, A New Legacy, specifically some of the things that come along with the movie. We have some Happy Meal toys, and then over here we have the LeBron James 18 Low, the LeBron 18 Low sneaker from Nike. So if you want to see this stuff, stick around. We're going to be opening it up and taking a look at all of them. We're going to talk about the movie. We're going to talk about Happy Meals. I have some thoughts about BTS. I have some thoughts. Right away, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you're not yet subscribed, click on the subscribe button down below and click on the thumbs up because those things actually help us out a lot. And then if you have thoughts about Space Jam or about the sneakers or about the toys or my opinions on BTS, um, Leave a comment. I'd love to hear from them. Or you can send me a DM on Instagram. I am at KO Kosha on Instagram. You can also follow at Ajimamag on Instagram. And follow at Honeycomb Manila. This is our studio in Double Dragon Plaza, Pasay City, the Philippines. If you want to come here, if you want to shoot videos like this, it actually costs nothing extra. Um, it's, it's basically at the cost of entry. So send me a DM on Instagram if you want to know more about that. Now before we go in to talk about Space Jam, A New Legacy, um, I do need to get into a couple disclosures. First, Warner Brothers is a client of Honeycomb Manila over the last five to six years. Uh, we ran a lot of events for them. We've done, we ran an event called Pop Expo. I spend a lot of time on stage for them, um, but this is not connected with them um, at all. They didn't send me any of this stuff. Uh, and then Nike did send me the sneakers. So the LeBron 18 lows are from Nike and you guys should know that off the bat. Um, that said, I'm a fan of all of this and I grew up watching Space Jam and uh, I did watch a movie and I did like it. But first, let's dive right into it and talk about this sneaker. This is the LeBron 18 Low in one of the Space Jam colorways because there are actually three Space Jam colorways for the LeBron 18 Low or at least three have come out already or are being shown on the Nike app. This one though I think is the one that is my favorite, is the most unique and is the one that's actually sold out already. Although if you tried hard, you can get them. You can find them. I think Nike Park still has them, a few other places. On the box, it says, engineered to the exact specifications of LeBron James. And then this box also says LeBron James uh, 18 XX. VIII Nike 2020 to 2021, just do it, um, which is the season, the basketball season that this comes out. And then it also says BBZ 330. I don't know what that is. If you know what that BBZ 330 means, leave them in the comments down below. Um, this is the standard box for all LeBron 18 lows. You open the top. It's got a, it actually has a sticker on the inside and it says uh, Space Jam and New Legacy and all related characters, copyright, trademark. So basically you have all of the Nike and LeBron uh, trademark stuff on the bottom. But because this is not a special box, they had to put that sticker on the inside. All right, so you open up the paper and right away you see the first shoe. And that gives you an idea of which colorway we're dealing with here. And I say the first because the pairs are actually mismatched. So this is the first shoe. And this is the Wiley Coyote shoe. And then gives you an idea of where we're going. The other sneaker is the Roadrunner sneaker. And that is the right shoe. So Space Jam and New Legacy came out in theaters. It did pretty well. I think it's a best family film opening since the pandemic started, right? So it actually did 30 million, I think, in the in the United States is one of the few places that it was able to open in box offices. Um, so it did really well. It actually knocked Black Widow off of the number one spot. It also simultaneously released on HBO Max for no additional fees. Uh, we watch it on HBO Max. We have a VPN. We can do that. If you want to do that, look up on YouTube how to use a VPN. Uh, <laughs> But in the movie, we also get to see a lot of these Looney Tunes characters come out. And the Roadrunner and Coyote actually play a lot of roles in the movie. So let's talk about the inspiration between, between the sneakers. If you don't know the Roadrunner and Coyote cartoon, basically what happens is that every episode is the same. First, the Coyote tries to set up a trap for the Roadrunner. The Roadrunner runs through the trap uh, and nothing happens. And then the Coyote tries to trigger the trap to see what's wrong. And then of course, he gets captured in the trap, which means he blows up in his dynamite or he flies into the air, falls into a pit, something like that. On the sneaker, on the Coyote sneaker, what you have is the swoosh is in kind of the dynamite color. And then you have all the rope that he's using for making his traps. It's brown because the Coyote is brown. And then across all of the fuse, 
it has kind of this uh, drawing of wood grain. Now the wood grain is kind of like he's using wood planks and the wood grain. Those are kind of the, the other materials that he's using to make his traps. So that's what they put there. And then on the air bubble, it says, yo, <laughs> it says, yo, for when uh, the coyote like blows up and falls into a pit or something. On the tongue, you have the Tune Squad logo, which is the team of LeBron James and the Looney Tunes. And then the eye stays are inside a, are done in kind of a suede. Let's talk a bit more about materials later when we're talking about kind of the build of the shoe altogether. But before that, let's take a look at this sneaker. This is the Roadrunner sneaker. And kind of the theme, if the Coyote one is based around the traps, the Roadrunner is based around all of the clouds of smoke that he leaves behind when he's running. So the swoosh is in this cool, it's, a, it's made of rubber, cloud of smoke that he leaves. And then those plumes of smoke are also drawn on the fuse overlays that are holding the sneaker together. It looks like it's more or less a, a low stitch design. It's held together with a lot of that fuse and then underneath you have the stitches. On the tongue, you have that same Tune Squad logo. And then on the air unit, it says beep beep, which is the only thing that uh, that Roadrunner ever says. Now a few other things where the which I think are best shown together. On the heel of the sneaker, you have the LeBron James LJ logo and they are both in clouds of dust and then behind the tongues on the Roadrunner one you have a you have an embroidered image of the Roadrunner's head and then on the coyote you have the coyote hand holding up a sign that says help they don't talk they don't talk in the in the cartoon what happens is that whenever they want to say something they hold up a sign that says what they want to say so that's the coyote's hand saying help and then on the insoles you see that in there you have the coyote on the insole i tried to remove the insoles they don't come out they're glued in pretty well you have the coyote and then you have you have the road runner so that's the inspiration for the sneakers. One of the other ways that they're different is that the Roadrunner's eye stays are made out of this yellow patent leather. And as I said earlier, this one is kind of in a synthetic suede. Uh, other than that, the LeBron 18 lows. And let's talk about the LeBron 18 low for a minute. For cushion, the LeBron 18 low is using an Air Max unit in the heel, very similarly to the uh, LeBron 17 low. And then it also uses React Foam in the forefoot and it extends from the forefoot up on top of the air unit to give a really good transition feel between the heel to toe. This is a performance basketball shoe, which means we're getting performance basketball shoe materials in the sneaker. So we have a synthetic mesh kind of ripstop upper and it is very thin. Underneath that, there's like a thin layer of neoprene, a booty-like construction that holds the tongue in place. As you get to the heel section, this start, this part is very sturdy and there's a lot of lockdown that's coming from this heel section. Um, I was worried in the beginning that this edge might be a bit sharp against my ankles, against my skin, uh, but it's not because it actually peels away. As you can see, there's very thick cushioning over here and it actually extends out and under your, uh, your Achilles and ankle, I should say. So it actually goes underneath and that's what's holding onto your foot and this section pushes away. You should be wearing socks because it, it is a performance basketball shoe and you should be wearing socks when you're playing sports. Um, but if you just pop them on for lifestyle or whatever, then they'll actually do pretty fine. And then stability is given by this heel clip, which by the way also has a LeBron James signature there on the heel clip. It's kind of hidden back there. Comfort wise, it's Air Max and React Foam, which are two of the things I'm really obsessed with. You can't really tell here, but after the gum outsole that wraps up um, for, you know, for side to side movements, the React actually climbs all the way up here behind the fuse. So it actually goes all the way pretty high. Outsole, as I said, is in gum rubber. They're kind of mismatched as well. You have a red four foot pod in the uh, Coyote sneaker and then on the Roadrunner you have a blue one and then you have this nice light gum for the rest of the traction. The traction uses kind of this nubby style of traction and then the pod is done in kind of like a reverse waffle. Actually the waffle design from Nike kind of looks like a waffle iron not like a waffle itself, we just call it waffle. This one looks like actual waffle. And then you can see the React actually peeking through all, 
all of the great React shoes always have some sort of sculpting. Uh, in this case, they're like little holes that are carved out and sculpted out throughout the sneaker and that allows for the foam to expand inwards um, to create the cushion. So if, the, if you have good foam, but it's encapsulated and you step on it, the foam has nowhere to expand into, so it doesn't really create the cushion. These sculptings allow for the foam to expand out and create that cushion and responsiveness when you're playing a uh, sport or even just walking around. And then this pink section here, that's that feels like it's actually TPU and that's the bottom of the air unit already. So yeah, sculpting that out actually creates um, some, you know, less weight. And lightweight sneakers translate to uh, more effective, you know, faster sneakers in general and allows you to play longer because you don't get so tired. Now, if you remember our LeBron 17 low review, I actually recommended very heavily that you went up half a size to a full size with that sneaker because they were very narrow. These sneakers are size 9.5, which is my true size. I put them on and they fit well, but they fit um, very one-to-one, -one, so close right up against my foot, which is kind of what you want for performance basketball, is that you want for your sneakers to be right up against your foot so that they respond to all of your movements. If you have normal or narrow feet, then do go true to size. You have the option to go up half a size if you just want a little bit of wiggle room. But I think that these sneakers will both feel better and look better. They'll perform better and they'll look better if they are true to size because you want this mesh stuff to be all stretched out against your foot for them to look really cool. If you are a wide footer, do go up half a size to a full size up um, because it will become a concern when you get your foot in. It does get pretty narrow here in the midfoot section. That's the first one, we'll put them over there. And then next, let's get to the toys. These are the McDonald's Happy Meals toys. And uh, let's drive right into them. I got three toys, I went to McDonald's um, a couple times. The first time I went, I got, of course, the LeBron James, right? So LeBron James, he's, uh, he's of course the lead in Space Jam, A New Legacy. And there's a switch on his back. And when you flip it back and forth, he like he moves his arms and the basketball and they he's kind of like passing the basketball back and forth ball handling in front of him if you're curious he's wearing cartoon sneakers nothing special about the sneakers really but he does have that classic lebron armband and all of his tattoos uh next up we have the marvin the martian so marvin the martian uh, one of my favorite looney tunes characters he doesn't play as big a role in the movie in this new space jam uh, a new legacy movie as some of the other characters as much as say Wile E. Coyote or, or the Roadrunner. Now with the toy you load up the ball like that and then you press this and it's supposed to shoot out the ball. So let's find out. It shot! It shot! <laughs> and then last we have the Roadrunner. So Roadrunner which is perfect to match a sneaker. When you move him back and forth, he bounces that basketball up and down. So there, you got the Roadrunner and the Roadrunner sneaker. You got that big cloud of dust, big cloud of smoke. And then as you can see, the colors are spot on. Congratulations to whoever was doing the color matching for these. All right, so the LeBron James we got with the uh, pancake meal, which is 90 pesos, which is normal. And then these two I got at the same time because um, I got chicken nugget meals and uh, the chicken nugget meal is like 140 pesos for the kids meal and with that you get four piece nuggets you get some fries you get a coke and you get your sauce right and then you get the toy and when I bought them together I realized that I had gotten eight pieces nuggets a bunch of fries uh, about what is that 16 ounces of coke and two sauces for pretty much the same price as the BTS meal that was 180 190 pesos and the BTS meal is around that price except you don't get a toy so it, it really made me wonder like how come these BTS meals didn't have toys as great as these now I will say that the the Roadrunner is the nicest in terms of quality um, the Marvin the Martian one is also nice quality the LeBron James is just okay not that great quality but I don't understand why there was no BTS toy. Like people would go back over and over to get all of the BTS toys, don't you think? Clearly the brand can afford it. I really don't think that it cost the price of a toy to make the sauce a different flavor. I thought that the fulfillment level of getting these cool Looney Tunes toys in my Happy Meal, you know, was much better. So why not 
Why not McDonald's? Why not? On a side note, I actually, after watching the movie, I, I watched it at work because we have a VPN here. Um, and uh, so I called up my daughter and I said, hey, I got these Space Jam toys from McDonald's. And I watched the movie and they had actually watched the original Space Jam with Michael Jordan. They watched it early pandemic around July of last year. So around a year ago. Um, and she, she was really excited about this new one. And I said, hey, so I got some toys. I got the Roadrunner toy. Do you know the Roadrunner? And she said, no, I don't know Roadrunner. And I told her Roadrunner is a bird, runs really fast, escapes all of these traps. And she's like, like an ostrich? I'm like, well, kind of like an ostrich, but small. Um, and I'm like, you don't know the Roadrunner? She's like, I don't know the Roadrunner. I said, oh, well, I also got this Marvin the Martian toy. Do you know Marvin the Martian? And she said, no, I don't know Marvin the Martian. And I told her, hey, no, no, Marvin the Martian, he's this character. I'm sure you know him. He has this green helmet with like the feathers on top. And then he's got a black head, flies around the UFO, and he shoots a ray gun. And she said, no, I don't remember Marvin the Martian. I said, okay. Well, I also got a LeBron James toy. Do you know LeBron James? And she said, yes, I know LeBron James. So I thought, I just thought that was a funny story. And I thought that that was also a key point in understanding what makes a great collaboration, which is that both parties bring something to the table. One plus one equals six. And hopefully that's what's happening with LeBron James and with the Space Jam movie. Honestly, I watched it. I think that LeBron is a slightly better actor than Michael Jordan, which is not saying a lot. He's not very good in the movie, but the movie as a whole is very enjoyable, especially if you're watching it with your kids. I mean, a lot of people are complaining about this movie, but honestly, as a father with ten year with five to ten year old children, if you have had to endure things like Baby Shark and Coco Melon throughout the last five to ten years, trust me, this movie is a breath of fresh air and they will enjoy it a lot. And it's a great way to discuss all the, the stuff that they love these days, honestly. Um, cartoons and video games, computer games, technology, but kind of combining them with sport and family values. One of the things I loved about Space Jam, the movie, it's not the greatest movie on Earth. You know, Avengers is definitely a better movie, but for a 5 to 10 year old, Avengers can be pretty scary. Sometimes. Sometimes. All right. What do you think of the sneakers? What do you think of the toys? What do you think about the BTS meal? If you're not yet subscribed, subscribe. Please subscribe. And uh, click on the thumbs up button. Helps us a lot. All right. My name is KO. I wish you guys good luck. I wish you guys good health. Peace.